Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to take a look at the biomechanics of the thoracolumbar fascia. This is an important anatomical area to consider because of what we know about how the thoracolumbar fascia assists with support of the spinal column. And of course, as all therapists know, a failure for support of the spinal column can leave it to more vulnerable to injury. So we're going to take a, a detailed look at how the thoracolumbar fascia operates and how it interacts with the muscular system in the lumbar pelvic area. Just to refresh your memory on the general anatomy, here is a transverse section through the torso and just with my highlighter here I'll indicate this is the vertebral body, here are the spinous processes and here are the uh, uh, transverse processes. The thoracolumbar fascia consists of this large uh, sinewy tissue which consists of multiple layers. This is the most superficial outer layer which attaches onto the tips of the spinous processes in the lumbar spine. And there are deeper layers of the thoracolumbar fascia which uh, attach to the tips of the transverse processes. Uh, so these fascia layers unite both posteriorly and from the deep internal layers to form a boundary around the musculature in the area and all unite to, to in the lateral margin of the torso to form what's known as the lateral ralph. If we move further anteriorly around the abdominal wall, we can see in this zone here the uh, anterolateral abdominal wall musculature, some of which inserts directly into this uh, thoracolumbar lateral ralf and that's the those muscle groups are the uh, transverse abdominus and internal obliques uh, which have a particularly important role uh, to play in this in this system now if we look from the anterior perspective uh, here we have a schematic view of the transverse abdominus and we can see the horizontal fiber orientation which attaches into the lateral ralph area here illustrated posteriorly and this is the uh, as, as I mentioned previously the junction of the layers of the thoracolumbar fascia. Now we know from Paul Hodges and Gwen Richard Gwen Joel's work that the uh, transverse abdominus and the multifidus work in a synergic fashion so they are uh, they co-activate in terms of facilitating spinal support but we need to have an understanding of what the effect of muscle contraction of the transverse abdominus is on the thoracolumbar fascia and as you can see from the from the diagram here uh, the muscle contraction uh, of transverse abdominus will pull on the thoracolumbar fascia and the effect of that pulling which will uh, I'll just change my highlight uh, color here the line of pull here will basically tension the thoracolumbar fascia so that it pulls in this direction and the effect of that is to bring these two zones closer together and again we look at the biomechanics in a little more detail shortly but that is one of the mechanical effects of muscle contraction of the anterolateral abdominal wall the other concept to remember here is the so-called oblique sling system which Diane Lee and Andre Vleeming did a lot of work on and here we're looking at a posterior view of the torso where we can see the line of force generated by the latissimus dorsi and the contralateral gluteus maximus and this system has been postulated to assist in supporting the uh, pelvic joints and assisting uh, instability there by virtue of the force couple generated by these uh, muscles muscles line of action however we must remember that in order for those muscles to generate the force they need to generate their force by applying tension to the thoracolumbar fascia in this zone again so here we have another uh, so-called oblique muscular system where the uh, interaction of these posterior oblique muscles applies tension across the lumbar spine and pelvis by virtue of its interaction through the thoracolumbar fascia. So the muscles can be viewed as a, as a spring system to actually impart energy into the, uh, into the uh, thoracolumbar fascia simply by adding tension to this viscoelastic uh, structure. Um, so not only do we have an oblique longitudinal system posteriorly but we also have 
uh, the, uh, an anterior oblique system which consists of the oblique abdominals and the contralateral ad adductors. So what we see here posteriorly is also replicated anteriorly. And of course, those force couples then are superimposed upon the transverse force couple generated by the lateral abdominal wall. So we can see that the thoracolumbar fascia receives insertions uh, of muscles pulling in multiple different directions. Uh, but the net result of tensioning of the thoracolumbar fascia is to assist in the spinal support mechanism. And we'll show uh, shortly now how that comes about. This schematic view, uh, again, a transverse section. The top section here is the, uh, the two sheets of the rectus abdominis. Here we have the uh, vertebral body and the thoracolumbar fascia, as mentioned before. Now... If we look what happens when the abdominal muscles contract, their line of action is to pull in this direction. And when the thoracolumbar fascia is pulled in this direction, uh, it essentially is tensioned along the lines as, a, as the arrows have indicated. So essentially the abdominal muscle contraction pulls and tensions the fascia in this direction. And the effect of tensioning in this direction is to pull the spinous processes together because the fascia attaches all the way along the tips of the spinous processes in the lumbar spine. So here you have a system where uh, pulling in an anterolateral direction through the abdominal wall assists in tension, so-called hoop tension of the thoracolumbar fascia, which then approximates uh, the spinous processes. So this is how the system of uh, interaction between the abdominal walls and the thoracolumbar fascia works to assist in spinal support. This slide again illustrates the cylindrical support mechanism uh, on the left where we see the spinal column and uh, this uh, uh, construction consisting of the diaphragm on top, the pelvic floor below and the lateral abdominal muscular musculature uh, transversely. And those groups of muscles all interact to facilitate support the supporting mechanism of the spine. The schematic view on the right hand side just illustrates why this mechanism is necessary because the natural mechanics of the torso mean that there's significant pressure placed upon the spinal elements simply because of the uh, line of action of the weight of the torso which is very anterior to the axis of motion of the spine. So essentially there are a predominance of forces which want to produce a flexion moment in the spine and where the role of the lateral abdominal wall and the oblique system is in is that it generates a force through this lateral area of the abdominal wall and also the oblique sling system as we've described which all help to generate tension through the thoracolumbar fascia and by virtue of generating tension, the spinous processes in this area are brought closer together so the lumbar lordosis is supported. <clears throat> so from a clinical perspective, we need to both remember and recognize this because for this system to operate, the musculature needs to generate sufficient power for one. And secondly, the timing and coordination of the muscle contraction needs to be present in order to actually tension the fascia. So when this system was originally postulated by Serge Grasovetsky in the early uh, 90s, it was thought to contribute up to 50% of the mechanism of spinal support. Those figures have been revised downwards in recent years uh, to approximately contribute about 20%. But nonetheless, 20% uh, uh, of the support for the spinal column is an important uh, is an important requirement. And this, as th as therapists, we need to bear this um, this mechanism in mind uh, because it may well explain why some of our patients break down with spinal problems with relatively simple trivial loading. So this is a mechanism we need to understand and explore because it is applicable in our daily clinical uh, challenge. Thanks for dropping by. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.